Welcome to South Cedo Paranormal. It is Thursday, May 12th, 2022. And um, I'm changing the plans for today a little bit. I'm going to cover the news that I didn't get to cover on Monday's show. <clears throat> um, and uh, just because that's how things worked out today. So, um, as always, you can find all the episodes of the podcast along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me uh, at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S A L S I D O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions for shows, or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others, always happy to share those on the show, whether it's by reading them or having you join me on the show. And um, we can just, you can just contact me through email or through Discord or however. Uh, and again, all those are at the links are at the podcast page. And um, we can arrange whatever works best for you. So, um, again, tonight I'll be covering the news articles that I didn't get to cover on Monday. So, um, let me just get the first one and put it in the chat. Again, I'll, I'll share all these in the live stream chat here. And then, of course, I'll include them in the episode description. Um, thank you all for listening. Whether you're here for the live stream or you uh, listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, I really appreciate it. So, let me find this first link here. These, um, I clicked these actually last week, so I'll be kind of rediscovering them, remembering them as I go along. So, but, uh, let's see here. Here's the first one. And, um, let's see here. This is from, uh, the dailymail.co.uk. Um, UFO is spotted hurtling across the outback sky in eerie dash cam video. So, let's see here. Um, and, uh, Go to the article here, and we will I'll talk about this. Uh, let me see. So this was captured apparently on a, a camera on in a vehicle, um, a dash cam, and um, the driver was uh, a man, um, Northern Territory man. It says I get, I'm guessing that's a part of Australia. Um, who was driving along Top End Road, Rosebury, Rosebury, um, and uh, he saw a light in the sky, and he shared the video to Facebook, apparently. Um, and uh, even just in the still image, there's something there, it looks like. So, um, but anyway, this is, uh, and... This is article is by Ashley Nickel, Nickel, N I C K E L, published um, on the twenty eighth of April. So this is a little while back. I always kind of save some articles back from the previous week's uh, alerts, so that I always have articles to share with you all. So, but um, so let's get here to the article. Uh, so it mentions. The uh, ball of light was seen flying uh, across the sky at a high speed. Um, and uh, some people, some uh, some experts think it could be a meteorite. Others claiming it's an identi unidentified flying object or UFO. Um, so... The um, the driver and his his uh, roommate were driving along uh, this road, and um, and then they saw a flash of light 
making a line heading towards the ground at around 10 p.m. on a Saturday. But in the uh, but basically before it ever hits the ground, it apparently vanishes. Um. So let's see here. Uh, the article says that apparently this is a quote from I'm guessing from the driver. It said this is the only thing they can think of it is is either space junk being uh, burnt up in the atmosphere or a meteorite burning up on entry um, and of course this is uh, the neat thing about this in a way is that this is not someone that who's um, has ever seen anything like this before so that always kind of makes things um, interesting and uh, several people in the comments and the social media have said that the bright light was my like bright light was likely a meteorite or a shooting star, and of course others weren't convinced. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's where that article ends. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. Um, so basically, yeah, it just kind of covers um, the social media comments um, and uh, just the different points of view on it. So I thought that was a neat little article there, and um, wanted to share it. This week's um, batch of stories, it's really, uh, you never know what you're going to get as far as the percentages of UFO versus paranormal versus whatever. So this time, this is the only directly UFO-related story in this batch, but uh, that's okay. That's going to happen sometimes. So... Let me close that, and then I'll get on to the next article here. Let's see here. But, um, but okay, let me see here. Um, so, APOC says, uh, yeah, that's cool. In the video, it looks like it might be space stuff, but you never know. Right. Yeah, that's why I always share these, because that's the thing. You never know. Um, so... Because I could just completely, I could just totally ignore the UFO sighting articles if I really wanted to. But I like to I like to include them just in case it turns out to be something. Um, as far as I know, that uh, I haven't heard anything else about that cloud formation in Alaska. So I don't know if that was ever solved or not, or not, or if it was just explained away right away. So, um, that's why I like to share these, because, just in case. So, let's see here. Get the next link. And, this is from, um, a website called, uh, datarocks.iheart.com. Let's see here. Um, so this one, the title is Paranormal Investigators Share Image of Ghost Child in Abandoned Asylum. Again, this is similar. These kind of articles to me are similar to the UFO articles in that you never know what exactly is going on, but still it's... Um, just in case, I always like to share them. I think that's really part of the, the purpose of these new shows. So, um, a group of paranormal investigators think they may have captured an image of what appears to be a ghost child looking out of a window. It was The image was taken at uh, Our Lady's Psychiatric Hospital in Ennis, according to uh, a social media post. Um, and of course, when it comes to asylums, the conditions, um, a lot of times deteriorate over time, so, um, so this group of investigators, <clears throat> excuse me, um, shared a picture of a window from this place, and, uh, there appears to be a, a face in the window. 
the ho hospital was officially closed in 2002. Um, <laughs> and uh, there were plans originally to develop it into a four-star hotel, but uh, never materialized. And, um, so yeah, there you go with that. Let's see here. Um, and it just shares the social media post here. But um, that's basically it. And of course, I, I def definitely recommend checking out these articles to get more details that I, I miss. Um, just because. And uh, see what you think. Um, so yeah, I thought that one, Apox in the chat says that one is creepy and cool. Yeah. I thought it was an odd one there as well. So um, I had to share it. And that, a lot of these articles, they go, there's like usually multiples of them. Um, and this is one that I found of this one. So, but, um, so I think from there we can move on to the next one. And just, there's another one of these stories that makes me uh, shake my head a little bit. Um, here we go. And, uh, this one is from Newsweek. Woman claims her haunted dog collection is scaring off neighbors, basically. Um, and this is by Sophie Lloyd. Um, and again, and this is on, um, Newsweek. So, basically, this is about a haunted doll collection. Or at least a doll collection that people believe to be haunted. And the, the uh, woman that is mentioned in this article believe them to be haunted. Um, and, uh, apparently... There is enough activity there where neighbors reportedly move out, move in, and move out very quickly. Which can happen, um, if that is in fact what's going on here. And uh, this is just another one of those things, I would say. I, Of course, if you're renting the place, then it's your home. But at the same time, I feel like maybe don't keep something that could be affecting others in your home <laughs> that does, doesn't seem like the best idea to me um doesn't seem very considerate um if that's the case just uh my take on the on the topic here on the article here um and the the article talks about the this um residents opinions and and um basically what's going on the 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 owner says that they do everything they can to contain it to their apartment um but uh basically asking the spirits to only stay in that apartment um but they have but the owner says they have no control over what the spirits do um so, so yeah, this is just, um, this is just one of those things where I, I saw this and I had to shake my head a little bit. You can read all the details in this article, but, uh, I just feel like it's a, it's not the nicest thing to do in a way. If you think that, that there does seem like there's really stuff going on and it's, Affecting other people around you that are not interested in this stuff as you are. If it's your own house, your own property, I can kind of maybe... Where it's not... There aren't others that are, are being affected by it that are living nearby. That's... I think... I feel like, in a way, it's not as bad. And maybe I'm wrong here. I don't know. This just doesn't seem like a very good idea. Um, so I had to share this because... I, uh, yeah, just had to share my opinion on this situation here, so, but, um, anyway, so there's this one, <laughs> um, I don't like to ever 
talking absolutes or anything like that. And obviously, if, if you know, people are free to do what they want to do. I just feel like, eh, you might be might be affecting other people who are not interested in this stuff. So, but anyway, I think I've said all I need to say on that one. Um, let's see here. So I'll move on to the next article. Let's see here. Okay. This might be a shorter episode, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this next one is, uh, something that you hear about from time to time. If you look into these subjects. And I thought this was, um, really something. And this is a forest in Romania that is said to be the world's most haunted place. Uh, and this is from uh, thetravel.com. I'm not going to try to say the name of the location because I don't speak foreign languages very well. Um, so let's see here. Let me get into the article. Um, so this, this, this forest is... Um, Known for a variety of paranormal activities in the area. It's also known as the Bermuda Triangle of Romania. And it's in Transylvanian, uh, Transyl Transylvania, apparently. They're near there. And, um, so let's see what they say is going on there. Um, so this forest, let's see here. Oops, I'm just trying to, okay. So, um, it mentions that just the atmosphere alone, um, in that there is kind of odd in that there are, the trees look almost skeletal, and, um, it's really quiet. And, let's see here. Apparently, um, this is located in north, northwest Romania, and it's, it's over 700 acres. And let's see here. Um, local legends say that uh, for hundreds of years, it's been virtually impossible. Basically, that's what the article is saying here is um, there's there's been over the long, lot of history and but also a lot of folklore and uh, um, mystery surrounding the area. So, it's mentioning, the article is just pointing out, is it haunted by the stories of what supposedly happened there, or by actual paranormal activity. Um, it has pictures as well. So, let's see here. Um, but apparently, it started, the, the strangest in that forest started with different people disappearing in this forest, similar to the um, lost colony of Roanoke. They mention in the article here. Um, peasants, that says, would be would vanish without a trace. Uh, never to be seen again. Um, then it says it wasn't until mid-20th century that the reputation as a paranormal hotspot started to grow thanks to alleged UFO sightings. Um... So, let's see here. Apparently there were photos taken in the 1960s by a biologist that um, were, are said to be the source of these reports of UFOs. Um, so, you have disappearances and then possible UFOs. Other stories, other reports include... Um, Let's see here. Many haunted places within the forest. And uh, points out again the, that it's hard to tell where the truth end, ends and the folklore begins. Of course, they've already said that. But um, anyway, let's see here. Um, and I, I'm not discounting that stories of, of um, like folklore can play a part in making an area seem like it's stranger than it is um 
but uh, let's see here. So it mentions, wow, apparently um, there's a story of a disappearance of a, dis uh, a shepherd and his 200 sheep. That's a lot. Um, oh, and then, some, uh, then apparently they reappeared again. Um, there. So let's see here. The one of the strangest stories they say in this article is about a woman that disappeared in the 15th uh, with a 15th century coin in her pocket, and then reappeared a significant amount of time later with the same coin, as if no time had, no time had passed there. Um, so, maybe even time anomalies in, the, in that area? Let's see here. There's also reports of, um, let me see here, first hand reports of visitors to the forest coming out with symptoms that range from unease to disquiet to, uh, Basically, physical manifestations like severe rashes, headaches, and even burns. Um, so, let's see here. Um, just looking at the end of this. Let's see here. Apparently, um, some people think that the cause of these, all this, this, uh, these things, these uh, effects on people, um, there are studies that have been done on the soil that show there's a higher than normal amount of radioactivity in certain parts of the subsoil due to the presence of natural uranium. So, uh, that's a interesting connection. I was just, that is odd in a way. I was just thinking today, I heard something mentioned somewhere about in an episode of a podcast they mentioned nuclear basically nuclear power plants and different things and it just i happen to wonder at that time if there's ever any kind of connection to that and um or disasters or materials uh and then hauntings and then i came across i started to read this article here and that mentions those kind of natural natural uh, nuclear materials, so. Um, um, anyway, um, you can read this article here, and there's various social media posts as well. Um, but, uh, seems like it would be an interesting place to visit. Uh, although, if there's things that are, if people are having rashes and burns, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't want to visit. It's always hard with those kind of places. That's, um that seem to have actual physical effects on people. And I'm interested, but not sure if I'm that interested. So, um, so yeah, I guess we'll leave it, leave that one there. Um, and move on to the next one. So, um, let's see here, I'll put this in the chat. Um, yeah. <laughs> I agree with APOC. Yep, no physical stuff, please. Exactly, yeah. That's like, like I said before, that's why I won't ever go to, um, just in case it is, your reports are accurate, I won't ever, I don't ever really want to go to places like Skimwalker Ranch. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm, the, the place is, is fascinating, but no, thank you. I don't want to go there in person. So, um, this one is about uh, Ireland again. Oh, wait, no, not Ireland. Let's see here. Um, anyway, still the UK anyway. Um, this is from Edinburgh Borough or Berg uh, News and uh, dot Scotsman dot com. And this is. Um, Another basically article about hauntings, and it says that uh, the ghost, the ghostly specters that still walk 
Mary King's close today. And close is it, it's a actual word for a location that I forget what it means now. But um yeah, look it up after this article is done. But uh so let's see here. Apparently this is um an area that is said to be haunted. Uh and um it's also kind of a tourist that's well known for tourists uh that want to go there. And um let's see here. Mentions that um there's been a let's see I'm looking at the title here, or the subtitle. I think I'll just move on. I'm trying to summarize too much. Um so this says in the early 1980s, the area was a mythical place uh, talked about uh, in hushed tones. At the time, it wasn't open to the public. Uh, um, but um, people still made it there. And uh, let's see here. Basically, you had to have connections to the um, local government to be able to look into the place but um it has become a tourist attraction kind of area and uh let's see here oops i've got a pop-up let me get rid of this pop-up this happens sometimes when I'm doing these things okay so um Basically, yeah, the, the, the area was open now to the public. Um, okay. So in the 80s, you entered, it says, through an anonymous door that led down into um, this area. And it's now said to be one of the most haunted places in the capital. And I guess, I'm guessing that's Scotland right there. Either way, it's the UK. Um, and as far as what is witnessed there, um, what a, one, one figure that is said to be seen there is a shadow or shade of Mary King herself, uh, allegedly captured as an image by um, ghost hunters with infrared cameras after, um, after the public had left the area. Others say they've seen... Uh, a male witch, Major Thomas Weir, W-E-I-R, who uh, walked through his, this area on, on his way to his execution. Um, so basically, many people have been, <clears throat> many um, apparitions have been seen there. Um, and uh, let's see here. So it goes into more detail about the various ones that are seen there, but uh, I think I'll leave that to the rest of you all to check out more. Um, and go from there. So definitely recommend it. These kind of articles are always, uh, to me, they're, they're fun to read. So um, just another area for you to look into or, and or through this article and or checking into it yourself. So, let's see here. Find the, uh, this next article is, um, just a collection of experiences. So we'll see, I might read one or two. Um, this is from BuzzFeed. And, uh, let's see here. This one says, uh, let me see here, wait. Um, okay. Uh, oh, I lost it. Okay. So this one says, uh, no one else believes me at, despite the footage. Uh, people are sharing their, I didn't believe in ghosts until stories. And, uh, so that's part of the title anyway. So, um, 
this was about basically people that did not believe in any of this stuff who then had experiences um, that then made them believe in these things. So, um, let's see here. I'll go to this first story here, and I'll summarize it. It says, years ago, my husband and I were uh, trying to see if, they, if we could get a mo uh, modest house. Uh, we took my sister-in-law to look at the house. It still had someone's personal items in it, as though they had just stepped out, but it was for sale. Uh, we walked through the house, <clears throat> um, and then the um, my sister, according to the story here, says, uh, my sister said, wait, I know whose house this was. This house belonged to that guy my son knew who died in his kitchen. And then it says this was this person's house. Uh, and at that moment, a cabinet door shot open uh, and apparently bumped into the sister's uh, back. And um, let's see here. So, basically, this there was a response to this person's sister's um, response, or basically figuring out what house it was. So, um, let's see here. That's that story. Um, I'm just trying to see which ones are easiest to go into here. This one says, when I was in college, I lived in an apartment complex. Every once in a while at around 2 in the morning I would hear breaking glass. Um, they say it was clear as day. Uh, they never saw any, found any breaking or broken glass around the apartment. Their younger brother would come over uh, and to basically it for parties they said. Um, and once or twice uh, he came busting into the, the writer's room, thinking someone was breaking in. Um, so basically, they're just reports of all these noises. And um, let's see here. It mentions the writer's girlfriend um, went over, or stayed overnight. And uh, they would, the girlfriend would... Um, basically not sleepwalk but be moving in their sleep and uh the writer said that when they looked over at her when when she did this one night she wasn't asleep she was sitting at the foot of the bed uh facing away from the writer and when the writer said their name the girlfriend's name she stood up and walked out of the room and then the sound of the breaking glass happened happened again. And the writer looked around and saw that the girlfriend was still laying next to them in the bed. Um, so that is quite odd. So um, this has like 19 different stories in it. So um, I will let you all dig into the rest of them. But those sound like a couple of experiences that would definitely be hard to just dismiss. So, um, so there's that one. If you're looking for any kind of short stories to read. And let's see here. All right, so these last two are more about um, ancient civilizations. Here, this link, I'll put it in the chat. We'll go from there. Um, this one is from Smithsonian Magazine. Archaeologists discover a temple in Egypt inspired by Greek god Zeus. Let's see here. I'll go into the link here, the article here. And um, of course, Zeus is basically the leader of the gods in Greek mythology. 
um, and was also known for using lightning bolts. Um, that was basically their what the, his weapon. Um, and this was found in the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt, and um, the remains of this temple were found, and it was apparently there was enough imagery there that uh, they were able to figure out that it was um, devoted to Zeus Cassios, who it says it's a deity that merges Greek god Zeus and then Mount Cassios. So that's inter interesting in a way, merging a uh, mythological god with a physical location. Almost making part of the planet sentient in that way. So um, it goes into a lot more detail here. But uh, the um, archaeologist also found a collection of granite blocks at the, at the area. They say it were likely part of a staircase that that allowed worshippers to reach the temple. So, um, there's a lot more here because it's Smithsonian. But, uh, but I thought that was, th these kind of discoveries are always, um, I'm always happy to hear about these kind of discoveries and interested to hear what they have to find, what they have to say about them. Um, what archaeologists have to say about them, so. Um, I definitely recommend reading that one as well. And then, speaking of finds, we have one more article here. Oops, let me just, uh... And paste this one. Um, and this is the last one we'll cover today. And this one, um, I found it on various websites. Um, originally, I actually had a link from the Washington Post, and then when I copied and pasted it today, it just went right to their main page. So, I had to go and find a different link <laughs> to to um, use for this, this show, because um, apparently the link expired or something at the time between when I found it and now. Anyway, um, and this is... The title is Farmer Unearths Ancient Statue of Serpent Serpent Crowned Goddess in Gaza. And um let's see here. I'll go to the article. And this is um by Emily Staniforth Staniforth. And um so this was discovered, the statue is basically, it says 4,500 year old, or 100 years old, according to all the articles I've seen. And it's made of limestone, and it's a statue that was found in Gaza. Um, and uh, the statue is believed to depict the head of the Canaanite goddess. And that, A-N-A-T, I'm not sure how you say it exactly. Apparently it's 8.7 inches or 22 centimeters tall. And it's estimated to date back to 2500 BC. Uh, this was the, this goddess was, uh, this was basically, they were the goddess of love, beauty, but also war in the Canaanite mythology. According uh, to um, sources here in this article. And uh, the statue was found on a, let's see here, a former trade route running through what is now the Gaza Strip that was important during several different periods, including the Roman, Byzantine, and Islamic areas. Er, eras, area, areas, yeah, eras. So, um, let's see here. Um, 
Let's see. It also mentions... Um, so there's links to other articles here. Um, but it says that evidence of the Canaanites is found in text going back to the 15th century BC. And the civilization existed in parts of what what is now Israel, Palestinian territories, Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. Um, so, um, looking further and see what else I should cover here. The uh, the farmer who found the statue said that uh, that they found it by chance. It was muddy, and they uh, washed it from the wa water. They realized that it was a precious thing, but they didn't know that, um, basically how important it was at the time. So, and it's now on display um, in a museum in the old city of Gaza. So, that's the article there. Um, I don't, again, whenever these kind of statues or artifacts or temples are found, that's, um, I always, that's always exciting in a way to me. So, just wanted to share that. So, that, that's it for today. Uh, um, thank you all for listening and for being here and for being okay with me doing these news. Um, oh, okay, let me see here. Um, Apoc says, often depicted as a beautiful young girl. Uh, she was commonly referred to as the, the Virgin and was a fertility goddess who was famous for her aggression in battle. Okay, that's a quote from, from somewhere there. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a cool find as well. I always like, like I said, the, when things like this are discovered, I, I'm always happy to share them. So, um, but that'll do it for today. Thank you all for listening. Um, tomorrow I'm going to have uh, Michael Strange on the show with me. And we're going to talk about um, Hollywood and the paranormal, basically. And how the two are connected and influence each other. And um, just have a conversation about that. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, that'll be it. So thank you all again for being here and for listening. And we will talk again tomorrow night on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.